Zo so, baie tja. <laughs> Look, he's, Luke is also confused about the sudden starting of the video. Um, yesterday we did this zypit covered with branches planted next to these trees. And uh, one of our clients said, why don't we fill up one with biochar? And that is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to show you the easiest way to make loads and loads of biochar and create terra preta, the soil that served the Amazonians for hundreds of years. So, after we've dug the pit, we decided to make the biochar in place. Look at your my unstick. And so in the Amazonian pits, it was more like a waste site. So they would make the fires in their homes, add pottery char and things like that, add bones. Um, some people, like David the Good said, believe that it might even be a human site, a site for human sacrifice. Um, however, I couldn't get any volunteers on such short notice. My wife didn't want to give up any of our children. Um, I don't understand it. But uh, yeah, so the idea is that we start the fire at the bottom and then as it starts burning, if it's burning nicely, then you can add more. Look here, look at my base. So it's all small sticks. Now the pyro pyrolysis only happens way at the bottom. Once it's filled up, the fire moves to the top. The bottom ones doesn't get any oxygen. We add more, more sticks and more sticks. And then the um, fire gets very hot and burns the top ones and takes all the oxygen from the bottom and it kills the fire at the bottom. Now this isn't a scientific method or the best scientific method. Obviously there's some science involved in this. Um, but I wanted to do something that anybody can do in the backyards. Anybody can have a bunch of bones. Anybody can have a heap of sticks. But not everybody can have a Lucas and a Simon to help them. Um, but you can, with a bit of manual labor, you can do this yourself. It might seem a bit anti um, productive but we found that if we if the fire gets too hot we cool it down a little bit with a, a bit of water and then that gives a bit more of a cooking effect to the wood and that produces more charcoal or charred wood and charred charcoal all around than ash so whenever your fire gets a little bit too hot you can add water and uh, just to make it a little bit cooler again. So this is the bones being added. And then the Amazonians added, uh, willing or unwilling, they added pottery pieces as well. The clay, the grond. So we are going to use this ant eel mud and cook it in there. And then it's going to become one giant pottery piece. Now, what the um, what you don't know or what you maybe know about termite mounds is that they are full of little holes so, so that will actually create a lot of living space for organisms and so on so the idea be behind the char and the charcoal is that it creates thousands and thousands of little spaces for insects Simon, Simon, Simon <laughs> almost lost Simon there. We almost had our first human sacrifice there now. <laughs> and uh, thousands and thousands of spaces of little places for bioorganisms uh, bio to live. And uh, that then creates fertility, and that in turn creates a fantastic garden. I once read a story about uh, the, a guy that moved onto a property and on the property there was an old charcoal factory and there was an old uh, uh, cow barn and then both of them moved off, the charcoal factory moved on and the um, cow barn moved off and then he kept record of how fertile the land was. Now, after about 70 years his son took over and uh, they kept record for more than 100 years and at about I think 120 years 
100 years or something, I'm speaking on the correction. The um, cow patch was ran out and the grass looked started looking the same as around it. But the charcoal patch kept on showing, visibly showing, b bigger grass, bigger fertility than the cow, bar, cow barn showed. So manure is a fantastic fertilizer. I'm not, and I'm even going to add some on top of this. We're going to add some worm castings to the charcoal. But charcoal lasts forever. And the charcoal itself doesn't have fertility in it per se, but it does have um, the ability to facilitate fertility. In other words, it creates a house, it creates a little holes for all the bacteria to live in. Look, it drinks a little deeper than you can. So, as you can see there at the bottom, I don't know if you can see it, but there at the bottom there's no more flames, and the reason for that is there's no more oxygen down there. All the flames are on the top. We lower it a little bit since we are in a dry area, in a drought, which is not fantastic, and we lower um, the rate of which we cook the wood. So we try to cook it a little bit slower, um, make the flames a little bit smaller at some stage, since we are trying to get a little bit more out of our, out of our system here. Below there, you can see the charcoal is forming, and we will then be adding loads and loads more. Where, Papa? Look at that, Sayela. Did we do a nice job? Yeah. And that was now, one thing you can remember during the process is that we're not aiming for perfection. Any um, wood that is not charred will still be consumed by the microorganisms. We will still add worms there, there's termites, there's other things that will eat the wood. Um, we're aiming for fast, easy way to make charcoal to add fertility. There is loads and loads of videos on how to build kilns and how to do this in the best scientific way possible. But the problem is people suffer from analysis paralysis. Very, very often, just getting up and doing it is 100% more effective than watching a thousand YouTube videos and doing nothing. So yes, we will add a lot more wood during the day. But for now, this charcoal mess down here, this is what we are aiming for. So fantastic news again. This morning we received a baby lamb. Let me just get out here. I have also haven't seen it yet. It looks like it's days old already. It's very strong. Irena. Almost cannot believe that it's a new baby. It's so strong already. Wow. Can you believe it? So that one is a couple of weeks old. This one is newborn. <laughs> Mom is not happy about it stealing its food. This is our little flock. So we're a little bit more ambitious than we were this morning. I decided that our fire was a bit too small this morning. And uh, this is about two meters high now. I see it's starting a little bush fire there in the back. Enzo? Just want to kill it there in the back. Mulch is catching on fire, which is not the ideal situation. Which was interesting is um, I thought I killed the fire with water this morning before I left for work. And then this afternoon when I came back, it was still smoldering and the walls were seriously, seriously hot. Um, so it was cooking itself the whole day. So here, 
Lana just called me, what else I say? There's a little stick of coal that fell there. As you can see, it fell between a bed of horse manure. This is about 15 meters away from the fire. So we're gonna wet it, but that is exactly what you don't want. That one will keep on smoldering there between the horse manure and then somewhere during the night, the na you're gonna get a call from an angry, angry neighbor. It took almost more time to cool down than it took to make the fire and to have it burn. But I don't know if it's going but this is, I hope I can stand on this. <clears throat> this is the product. Loads and loads of little charred pieces of wood. And so in each of these things, there are millions and millions of small tiny holes where the bacteria can live. And that will then create our fertility. We're going to cool it down completely tonight and then we're going to add worm castings in the morning. That is the end of day 11. I will see you in the morrow. Have a wonderful day.